said, the first one that can get over and down that other embankment, it's on the other side, come up, fix your bayonet, come up, out of that, leap over that, ram that dummy, supposed to be an enemy soldier, through with your bayonet, get your grenade loose and throw it. You'll eat steak with me at the captain's table. I thought I was on such rations, sea rations, and stuff like that. I don't know if I said, I'm going to eat that steak tonight. I ate that steak that night with Captain Fleming. Praise our God. Because there was a will in me. That was human. That's military. I'm using that as a lesson. Other soldiers did the same. I wasn't the only one that attained. So thank God you can attain. But you have to say, I am not in the world. I'm of the world, but I'm not. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. You have to say an eternal covenant with God. You have to make a commitment. Tired, I'll go on. Weary, I'll go on. Uh, nothing can daunt me, despair me. I know Jesus has come into my life. I am a new creation. I am a new creature. I have the strength, not in me, but in him. Not in myself, but in him. Praise our God. That has carried me thus far today to this pulpit. And here I stand, encouraging every one of you that you can get through the infiltration course yes. of your life. Amen. Whatever it be, however it is, you can get through it. I don't know what faces me the rest of my life, however long God has given me in his eternal predestinated will. But I do know who's going to face it with me. Yes. I don't know what's facing me, but I know who's going to face it with me. Amen. Because I have confidence. Being confident, Paul said to the church of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the very day. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus said, He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. James said, Blessed is the man that and the woman that endureth temptation. For when he has endured and been tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Paul said, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. And henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me in that day. Not only unto me, but in all of them that love his appearing. The dime store jewelry of the cosmetics of Satan's will and Satan's life, the glittering false diamonds, counterfeit diamonds, wooden nickels, of this world and all it can offer uh, yep. is not worth no. giving up your salvation for. No. No. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It isn't worth it. It's not worth it. I thought about uh, the trumpet. I played the trumpet in our church band here for eight years. My past, I know what it means to do that. And the word trumpet is used, I want to just use two places, and I know that the day we'll be getting on, we have dinner in the dining room, and Brother Phil Land told me he had a testimony to give at the end of the service here, and I wanted to make room for that, and, and, and we, we want you to know that we love you. Every one of you is such, such a lovely church today, and I can see the church growing, I see God helping us. But the word trumpet. <clears throat> oh, yes. Trumpet is God. Remember that trumpets have changed. 
In the beginning, they were not metal. They were skin, dried skin, woven, performed, where air would breathe through it, and you had a mouthpiece to it. And then it became the ram's horn. And then it became metal, the silver. Yeah. The trumpet has changed. From the beginning of creation until now, what we term the trumpet, which is an instrument to call an assembly, yes. to sound an alarm, to charge you to go to war, then to ask you to retreat and be at peace. The command of the trumpet, always the command of the military, plays a very significant picture <coughs> and the operation and the vision of the church. Armies have fought by the trumpet. Armies have withdrawn by the trumpet. Assemblies have come together by the trumpet. Peace has been declared by the trumpet. Yes. War has been declared yes. by the trumpet. In the book of Corinthians, that's the first scripture I want to use, we're getting ready for this revival. Yeah. We're also getting ready for a tremendous change in the politics, in the social world, yeah. in the economic world. Get ready for the crash of the economic systems of the world. Get ready for the most political, bloodshed you've ever seen in America. And before it's over, it will lead to rioting. It will lead to anarchy. Because men are learning to hate one another. Bedfellows of politics is splitting apart at the seams, yes. even while I'm talking. Yes, sir. The social world is a world of <coughs> Arizona campus shooting, Texas campus shooting. Go across the sea to Palestine, Jerusalem, stabbing one another. The world is at unrest. The Bible said the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. And I believe it's the 24th, would you help me with that? Uh, is it Isaiah 24, where he said he would turn the world upside down? Yeah, 24.1. Uh, read that, someone. Read that, loud and clear. Let me get it. You don't have it? No, give me All right, behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down. And scouts abroad, the inhabitants are up. Friend, that is not a dream someone had. That is a prophecy of a prophet. Yes. And it will come to pass. <coughs> That's not an illusionary concept located in what we call the Holy Bible. That's the prophetic word of God by a silver-tongued prophet 700 years before the coming of Christ. Behold the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof. It's exactly what God is doing right now. Because we have lived through generations of the church age, prophets prophesy, men of God preaching, and they lived to that age 2,000 years ago and turned him away. The Bible said in the first chapter of John, the Gospel of John, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Jesus said in the 24th chapter of Matthew, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, 
They bought, they sold, they planted, they married, they gave in marriage, yes. mm -hmm. and knew not till the flood came and took them away. Yes. And a quarter of a million souls in the Antediluvian world perished, and eight were saved. The Bible is not an illusionary book. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a fable. It is a fact. And now we're living in this day, and this day resembles that day. Because now, despite however a minister can be anointed, or whatever the greatest speakers or the small, or the little personalities or the famous, or the mega church or the small church, or the prayer meeting, meeting in a house, it is not changing our society, but most of all, it's not changing the church. Because the church is going its way and doing its thing. As the world is, so is the church. But not all. Did you hear me? Did you catch what I said? But not all. Would you say that for me, but not all? And not me. Praise our God. Not all and not me. Because I am going to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I'm not going to let this book be a book that I trample under my feet. I'm going to let this be the holy book. Yes. It isn't the Koran. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Thank God. It isn't the letters of Confucius. No. Yes. It's not the gospel of Hindu. It is God's infallible. Yes. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Infallible. Yes. Inerrant. Yes. Yes. Unfailing. That's right. Uncompromised. That's right. Absolutely. Word of God. And if you don't have it in your hands reading it, if you're not studying it, and if God is not dealing here to be sweet and kind and give and give and take and give and bear and forbear, and you're following a course dictated by this rather than by the Holy Spirit, you can't see, you won't understand That's it. what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Amen. But thank God I believe some people of God, even so, at this present time, thank you, Lord. there is a remnant. There is a remnant. Amen. Praise God. I feel such a covering. Feel the hum of fire. Praise God. Hello, Messiah. Amen, amen. Who you are, Messiah? Who you are, Messiah? God is going to perform His work. God is going to take and do his will. And you young people are here. I want all the young people to look at me right now. Look at them, look at me. You're not there, but look at me. You young people should be the highly encouraged ones of our church and our age because you have the gift that God is letting me slowly lose, the gift of youth. It's gone back there. I'm standing here in age. You have the, the gift that no man can replace. The greatest gift God gives you is life. Yes. And in that life is youth. Yes, sir. Yes. Because in your youth is strength. Yes. You can correct your mistakes. Yes. You can embellish your thinking. Yes. You can lift yourself above the crowd. Yes. You can put on the ornament of the most intellectual mind a man or a woman could ever have. Amen. Quickened by God. Yes, sir. When your mind is quickened by the Holy Spirit, you are a blessed man. You're not a dummy walking around. When God touches you and anoints you and gives you revelation and gives you understanding, you can match wits for the smartest and the brightest. Yes, sir. Because God has anointed you. Amen. You can be without a penny in your pocket, but when Christ comes into your life, when Jesus touches you, you become rich. 
Yes. Trump. Oh, yes. He's a pauper I'm the rich man. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The millionaires of the world, they don't have it. And I have it. Hallelujah. And you can have it because it's called salvation. It's called the riches of Christ. The trumpet, in 1 Corinthians 14, because I'll, I'll, I'll go beyond my time area, I have to leave if I'm not careful, but in 1 Corinthians 14, the trumpet, verse 7 and 8, quickly, and even things without life, giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound. How shall it be known what is piped or harp? Things without life, the trumpet, the saxophone, the clarinet, or whatever is being played as a musical instrument, has no life, it has sound. But if it is not a distinctive sound, if that organ ceases to sound like an organ, because it isn't giving the sound of an organ, then I'm, I'm going to have a problem understanding it's an organ. Right. If, if the clarinet sounded like a saxophone, I have a problem understanding that's a saxophone or a clarinet. And then Paul said in verse 8, for if the trumpet, if the trumpet, why did he pick the trumpet? Or if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, <coughs> who shall prepare himself to the battle? I believe he picked the trumpet because this is God's trumpet. Yes, is. This is God's trumpet right here. And God has always had a trumpeter for the trumpet. Yes, sir. God's always had an ordained call filled prophetic, apostolic, evangelistic, pastoral, teacher, trumpet. To sound a distinctive sound out of this trumpet. You can have this trumpet in your hand, and you'll not know if the wrong player is playing this. If one that is anointed of, not anointed of God is handling this, if one without understanding is using this, you won't know what kind of sound you're hearing. It's a mixed up sound. You can't tell if it's the sound of a saxophone or a clarinet or whatever it be. It takes an ordained prophet of God, teacher, vessel, to be 